Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for a special irrigation episode, a training episode from Jane Irrigation from World Ag Expo 2021, the first virtual Ag Expo show so far. Uh, we're very excited today because uh, from Jane Irrigation, we have Jeff Toole, the Executive Vice President of Jane Distribution Holdings, uh, going to be talking to us about labor and water savings using automated irrigation pump stop. Now, listen, I've known Jeff for a lot of years and uh, consider him an expert in ag technology. He wears a lot of hats at Jane, but he's really our thought leader when it comes to agricultural technology. Uh, he's been involved in agricultural irrigation for almost 20 years now. He's uh, had a position on the Irrigation Association's Board of Directors, and he brings a ton of information knowledge to Jane. Um, he's been involved in um, manufacturing as well as distribution and uh, is working with growers through the Central Valley. So uh, welcome, Jeff, and uh, thank you for doing this presentation today from uh, World Ag. Richard, thank you for the kind introduction. That was uh, that was really nice, and I've certainly enjoyed all the years you and I have uh, spent together, and, and appreciate uh, what a what a wonderful introduction. Um, I'm really excited about being here today. Um, you know, this topic is is a little bit unique. A lot of people ask me what what are you talking about, and you know, our team has spoken with so many growers uh, that they're they're just a bit leery of irrigation automation. It's always about the startup process and feeling they need someone at the site to check valves, to start the pump, check for leaks. Um, and so I know today's topic uh, on our idea of a pump stop only function is uh, going to hit home with a lot of the growers listening in today. So let's, uh, let's get started and um, looking forward to this, this presentation and the topic. We're going to talk some about uh, traditional irrigation system automation. I'm not going to go deeply into that, but we'll touch on it. We'll, we'll go over some grower concerns and some of the resistance that we're seeing. We'll, uh, we'll dive right into the automated pump stop function and what it is and how we do it. And then we'll get into the savings and we'll talk about labor savings opportunities as well as water savings opportunities. And then uh, we'll conclude and take some questions and, and answers. Okay, so this image is our, our catch all way to show an overview level of our gene logic system on a typical ranch with multiple blocks and a number of applications. Um, I'll, I'll use this to give a somewhat generic overview of, of more common automation layout. Um, although these systems almost always have soil moisture monitoring, weather stations and other devices, our focus today is on automation, so I won't be covering them today. Uh, if you're interested in those elements, please visit uh, Jane's website uh, and look at our monitoring and control section to learn more about the monitoring side of the business. So traditional ag automation starts with controlling the pump station that's used to provide pressurized water for the irrigation system. The control function here is, is to simply turn the pump on and off based on a predetermined schedule that's entered into a user interface such as, such as Gene Logic. In, uh, in more advanced applications, we may connect the, the controller directly to a variable frequency drive or VFD, and that connection is usually via Modbus. Uh, this gives us quite a bit more flexibility in not only turning the pump off and on, but to also control set points such as pressure and flow. The second most common element of control are opening and closing the hydraulic valves that really are there to allow water to flow from the pump out to the submains and laterals in the fields. These, these are the valves uh, that, that would typically be associated with an irrigation set covering a specific block in the field. Um, depending on the size of the field, you could have a single set or multiple sets. Normally we often see two to four set systems, but we, we do have customers with as many as 16 sets running off of a single pump. Um, very much like the pump, the valves are scheduled to open and close based on the amount of time the grower wants to run water in each section of the field. And it's and then the valve opening and closing needs to be synchronized with obviously the pump running. 
Another common element in, uh, in automation includes a traditional fertigation pump. A lot, a lot of people call them fert pumps and they're usually preset with a dosing rate uh, for the chemical application being applied. So they're also a simple on off control function. You know, once you have that, uh, the application rate uh, set, you simply need to turn it off and on. The best practice in this case is to start your irrigation water for an hour or so to make sure all lines are full and the water has started to penetrate the soil before you uh, turn the FERD pump on. You'll also want to stop the FERD pump a couple, uh, couple of hours before the end of your irrigation schedule to allow the chemicals to flush out of the lines and to push the chemicals down into the root zone. So that, that's kind of a, uh, a best practice there. I get asked quite often, why, why do more growers, why, why don't more growers uh, do this? It, it seems simple. You know, the, the reality is it is simple and, and we do it all the time, but growers are somewhat hesitant about fully automating their irrigation system. Um, it's, it's the key question to my presentation today and hopefully I have a, a solution that, that gets growers to a middle ground um, where they feel more comfortable with this. Uh, let's let's look at uh, what we hear from growers on why they are a bit reluctant uh, to implement uh, full pump automation. When you uh, when you consider how many acres are farmed throughout the U.S. and right here in California, adoption of automation and ag irrigation is is low to moderate at best. And I, I'm being pretty optimistic when I say moderate. Uh, low is the reality. You know, I stated earlier, I get asked why a lot. And um, let's look at what growers tell us all the time. I'll, I'll start at the bottom of this slide uh, to get to the number one reason first. Most growers say, quote, I have to send my guys out anyway. They have to make sure everything is right. And I always have them check the field for leaks before they leave. I, you know, I've asked, what, what do you mean everything is, is right? Uh, and the grower's response is you know, they have to make sure there's water. They don't want to run the pump dry, make sure the right valves are open, the pressure and flow is right, that the right chemical um, and the amount is right if they're running chemicals. And some, some are even concerned about safety. Like what if a worker was working on fixing a leak or doing maintenance um, in a wet well or a reservoir? You really wouldn't want to start to pump you know, on those guys. And you know, frankly, these, these are all valid concerns. Um, there are definitely ways to work around them and things we can do to ensure they don't happen, but it, 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 takes, a, it takes a greater investment. Um, clear, clear field procedures, you, know, so you have to make changes in the field in terms of how we do things. And then I think most importantly, um, there has to be more trust built in the technology. And, and that's a key to what we do today. Um, I think we have a, a new way of getting there with little to no risk, and, and that provides for some pretty, some pretty significant dollar and water savings. So without further ado, let's look at the automated pump stop. So what is it? The implementation of automated pump stop is it's technically identical to automating the pump as, as we've already discussed. It's a, a simple relay is installed in the pump's controller circuitry and connected to uh, a Jane C3 field telemetry unit um, as shown in the images uh, below here. I won't go into the details on that, but I, I just wanted to point out uh, that it is very simple and it is very straightforward. This is a, a two wire connection uh, with a relay. The automatic pump stop is, is it's using the same technology without automatically starting the pump, a la pump stop. It, it allows the grower to manually start the pump just as they would during their normal irrigation startup procedure, except now the pump can be automatically stopped at the end of a set period of time. It's, it's very much like the old pool timers that I've seen uh, in, in many growers' uh, fields and, and installed for the same reasons. You know, however, by using the newer technology like Jane C3, 
they can set the time duration through software, adjust time remotely if desired, and even stop the pump remotely at, at, at any time. Um, this is, it's not complicated at all, but it is very powerful in terms of the flexibility to make adjustments and control the pump uh, stop, if you will, control the pump stop remotely. So I wanna take a quick look at how easy this is in, in our software. Here, here we have scheduling software setup screen where I've chosen the field pump to run. And um, this particular pump is called Bay Pump, Bay 2 Pump uh, Control. And in, in this example here, I'm showing that I'm choosing the stop after duration, which you can see right here in, in the blue. You could also choose to stop at the end of the schedule, which is up here, that's, that's what's checked right now, um, which would stop the pump based on a start time of day and a stop time of day. But here we're gonna choose the stop after duration. Okay, so next we would um, choose, uh, we, well, we wouldn't choose, we've chosen the stop after duration. So here now we're gonna enter in the run time. And in this case, I just entered in run for 10 hours. So I select OK, and it's good to go. The pump will run for 10 hours, unless, of course, um, I went back into the software later to add more time or to shorten the time, or maybe even I wanted to manually stop the pump, which I could do at, at any time. So. This is a screen that just shows the, the pump uh, schedule as it's set. So it kind of gives you an overview. And here you can see the pump name. This is the pump control at bay two. Um, we've chosen to start it manually. So there's no automatic start. You don't have to worry about that. So you can go out and do your normal procedures and uh, start the pump manually. And it's gonna run for 10 hours uh, duration. This is gonna give an idea of the start and stop time based on if it starts at 4 p.m., it's gonna go off at 2 a.m. So these two images I just chose to show are from our cell phone or the mobile device um, software. And it's, it's the same software just running on a, a mobile application. You could view this on your computer as I showed in the, in the prior slides. Um, I just, just wanted to show you that this is also available on mobile devices as well. So in this first screen on the left, you can, you can see that the pump is active. So under status, the pump is active, which means the pump is running. And in this case, um, it shows you that there's two hours and 56 minutes remaining um, in the runtime. So it's been running for just over seven, seven hours. On this screen, you'll see that the, the same, uh, it's the same status, but here the status itself indicates complete, which means that the, the cycle has ended, the pump has turned off and there is no time remaining. So this is a good confirmation that the pump has stopped. And, and as you can see in these very few slides, this is a pretty pretty simple, Pretty straightforward process. There's a not a lot, uh, not a lot going on, going on here that's uh, complicated. So now that we understand what pump stop is, let's talk a little bit about the savings. Uh, if we look at the possible labor savings, it's it's. I've talked to a number of growers, and it's estimated that. The round trip to turn off irrigation takes about 40% of the total time to start and stop irrigation. So in other words, it takes roughly 60% of the time on startup because of the time it takes to make sure everything is set up right, to check uh, the field for leaks, et cetera. And depending on how, how far away the field is uh, from the crew uh, or the person doing the work, Growers have told me they estimate the time for the round trip to be around two to three hours. Uh, they also noted, which I think is important, uh, there's a lot of growers out there that use labor contractors that, you know, many times their contracts call for a four hour minimum. So when that comes into play, 
um, when the irrigation runs into the latter part of the day, evening or weekend, you're, you're paying that four hour minimum and that, that's gonna really run up your, uh, your labor rates. So in this case, we're assuming um, there's a seven to, month, seven to eight month irrigation period. There's uh, two to three irrigation events uh, per week uh, on average. Obviously, this is more or less depending on the time of year, but uh, two to three times uh, per week is the average across the entire growing season. Based on grower feedback, we're also estimating an average cost of $35 per hour, which includes the hourly rate of a qualified worker and the cost of the vehicle, the fuel and overhead. You know, honestly, uh, today, this is, a, this is a pretty reasonable rate. So I'm trying to be conservative here. And, and again, this is based on feedback I've gotten from, uh, from growers that we work with. We're also assuming that about 20% of the trips to stop irrigation events involve overtime pay rates. And um, this became even more important uh, this, this, these last years when the ag labor laws changed and um, for hours of overtime uh, down, down to 45 now. So we're paying overtime uh, rates after, after 45 hours. So that definitely factors in when you're sending out um, workers after hours and, and on weekends. Uh, when, you, when you look at the savings potential, um, if we look on the low side, assuming the two, two irrigations per week and only two hours uh, paid per, per round trip, the labor savings are just over 4,000 per year. If we look at the high side, uh, which is three irrigation events and three hours of, of paid labor, the savings jump to over 10,000 uh, per year. So, so based on grower feedback, again, this falls, um, I feel like from, from all of those that we've talked uh, with this about as, as we've explored implementing this, this pump stop program, everybody falls in this 4,000 to, to over 10,000 know, per year. And that's a per field savings. If you have four or five or more fields, the savings potential is, is significant. Um, you know, obviously, you know, if you're, if you're smart when you have many fields, um, and you set your schedules um, appropriately. The irrigators can sort of can sort of make make the rounds to shut off irrigation. So the cost might not be an exact multiplication of the fields, but you know, no matter what, the number of hours goes up when you add in more than one field. And depending on the water and pumping capacities, you can't always overlap irrigation. Uh, a lot of times growers have to go from field to field and, and a lot of and a lot of instances. So down at the bottom here, I did some quick five-year return on investment calculations to kind of help put the savings into perspective. And based on an average cost of 3000 to implement pump stop control in the first year, which is pretty, pretty darn reasonable, and that those are real costs. And then just over 900 uh, per year for years two through five, you can see the RIs are pretty impressive and certainly compelling. Um, there are not a lot of investments uh, that can be made for less than $7,000 over five years that will return 40 to 140%, even if the assumptions were off by 50%, and they're not, um, this would still be considered uh, great. Let's move on to water savings. As we look uh, at water savings potential, it's a bit, it's a bit tougher uh, because the savings really depend on the size of the farming operations. Larger operations need a lot more water than smaller operations, but the analysis here is relevant and there are water savings to be gained um, by all uh, through this automated pump stop uh, function. The savings on water come from avoiding overruns on, uh, on irrigation schedules. Uh, one thing we've learned on ranches where we have installed some form of irrigation monitoring is that irrigation doesn't always get turned off when the grower thinks it does. Um, that's, that's not a shot in any way. It's just a fact. 
you know, workers get tied up uh, with other duties. They're on the other side of the ranch. Um, they're at another field doing work that's pretty far away. You know, for whatever the reason, irrigation schedules are rarely stopped on time. Um, in general, we see overruns more frequently than we do short runs. And, um, and that could be simply that it's safer to let it run longer while I finish up what I'm doing than it is to shut it off early before I start. Um, and this is especially true on evenings and, and weekends. So in the simple examples I've, I've created here, I decided to look uh, at pumping rate in terms of gallons. You can see here gallons per minute. And if you look at uh, a cost range of water at the 80 to $110 per foot and for pumping cost in the 70 to 100 uh, per acre foot, I also had to make an assumption based on what we see in terms of overrun hours. And here I ran the figures based on 60 hours per year, which is pretty, pretty conservative. And as you can see, uh, the acre feet of water pumped for a 400 gallon, um, 400 gallon per minute pump is 4.42 acre feet for 60 hours at the other end of the spectrum. It's 13.26 acre feet. For 60 hours uh, of, of overrun, you can see here that um, we're looking at $663 per year on the low end and almost $3,000 on the high end. You know, the numbers aren't that high compared to say, when we look at the labor savings, but the reality is water is scarce and we have programs like Sigma and other regulations. So stopping on time, uh, stopping irrigation events on time and only using the water needed it's very important and it's only gonna get more important. There's a few other savings I've noted here. Um, these are opportunities that exist that, that I didn't analyze in terms of a financial impact, but a big one uh, can be running into peak power rate hours. PG&E just announced uh, they adjusted their peak hours um, to five to 8 p.m. seven days a week this year. So avoiding these hours when possible will, will have a significant pumping uh, power cost um, advantage. Um, also down here, you can see, um, and, it, and it may not result in big dollar savings, but could present safety improvements and, and avoiding running your pumps without water is, is shutting down on time when your water district is shutting down your water delivery. Um, these instances, they present a real sense of urgency when you know that the water agency is shutting off your water delivery at a specific time or after a, a specific delivery duration. And um, it's whatever arrangement you may have, uh, you know, with your, with your water district. And, um, but using automated pump stop, you can set your pump runtime to match that water delivery uh, or go into the software and manually turn the pump off remotely, really whenever you need to, whenever you uh, want to. So to just finish up and, and draw a few conclusions, um, I've got a couple summary points here that I've tried to pull back out. Um, automated pump stop, it, it's safe and it's easy to implement. And I think we've shown that I couldn't make it any, any easier. It provides a nice entry point into automation. It provides a great return on investment for labor savings and, and some pretty significant opportunities to save water caused by irrigation overruns. And then lastly, uh, being able to stop your pumps remotely at any time, it's a huge convenience. It's one of the things I've heard growers say more, more often than not, regardless of the savings, they love the idea of being able to shut off the pump without having to go out. A lot of them do it themselves on a Sunday afternoon. I've, I've countless times that guys say, well, yeah, I don't call my guys back out on Sunday or Saturday. I just go out and do it myself. So it'd be great to be able to, uh, to set that up with an automated pump stop. I wanna thank everyone um, for 
your time and attention today. Um, please feel free to contact me with questions or go to Jane's website for more information. I've got my contact information here. And again, we really appreciate um, you being in attendance today. Hope everybody has a fantastic World Ag Expo, even though we all can't be together. Um, we're all kind of together, together in spirit, and we'll be back together face to face uh, again soon. So thank you very much. Hey, great job, Jeff. Uh, what, a, what an interesting and um, a great way to uh, present this information. It's not often you see technology you can implement that pays for itself uh, within a year, uh, faster than a year. So thank you for that. Thanks to everybody for watching today. And uh, thanks to uh, everybody at the World Ag Expo for putting together a great uh, virtual uh, expo this year. We're really enjoying it. So thanks everybody. And remember you can see this and uh, other uh, trainings at the Jane's USA uh, training uh, site on their website as well. So thank you. Thanks, everybody.